Coming up, Tizi volunteers in Germany invite Syrian refugee families to a tea gathering. Tizi volunteers in Singapore raise environmental awareness at the 2015 Yellow Ribbon Prison Run. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Anita Lee, thank you for joining us. Since 2011, Tiji volunteers in Jordan have been working to ease the hardship and suffering faced by Syrian refugees in the country. Besides caring for refugees, volunteers visit care institutions and care recipients on a regular basis to ensure that their needs are also taken care of. Tiji volunteers have arrived at a Catholic orphanage in Ajloon with rice from Taiwan. Volunteers have been caring for children of the home since 2013, periodically bringing them food and aid. Despite being limited in number, Tsuji volunteers in Jordan dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to serving those in need. Tsuji volunteers next arrive in El Masra district to pay five care recipient families a visit. This mother has to raise four children, three of whom suffer from mental disabilities on her own. She says she is lucky to have had Tsuji's support over the past 18 years. <laughs> To help ease the hardships confronting Syrian refugees in Jordan, since 2011, Tiji volunteers have been at the forefront of providing assistance. Each month, volunteers distribute monetary subsidies and shopping vouchers for the refugees. At the same time, volunteers also hope to inspire compassion in their hearts. The coin bank I am holding in my hand is for everyone to put their compassion into action. No matter how much money you decide to put in here, you will be able to help more people in need. Although the future may seem bleak for many Syrian refugees, however, these simple acts of kindness have also created a ripple of love in their hearts. As Syrian refugees seek asylum in Germany thanks to the government, Sidi volunteers organized a festive tea gathering and invited over 100 Syrian refugee families to attend, hoping to give them a warm reception to the country. Let's take a look. This Tsuji event in Germany's Zost has been half a year in the making. <laughs> Today, Tsuji volunteers welcome over 100 Syrian families to their new life in Germany. <laughs> First, they help celebrate someone's birthday. Next, they pray for a world free of war and violence. There aren't many present that understand both Arabic and German. But the music helps to carry the sentiment despite the communication barriers. It is here that these refugees have found a new sense of belonging. Tsuji volunteers from Hamburg, Frankfurt and Munich have prepared many Chinese and Western vegetarian dishes to share. <laughs> Saying goodbye at the end of the event, the refugees have come to see the volunteers as a member of their family members. <laughs> Turning to Vietnam, we visit Tsuji volunteers in Ho Chi Minh City who celebrated their move to a new, more conveniently located liaison office for the community tea gathering. But first, we hear the story of a hotel owner who travelled to Taiwan to seek medical treatment at Taipei Tsuji Hospital. Thoroughly impressed with the quality of his treatment he received there, once back in Vietnam, the Ming Jie invited Tsuji volunteers to hold a tea gathering in his hotel for the benefit of his family and staff. 
when he was just 11, Deng Mingjian began suffering from ankylosing spontanitis. In July this year, Deng traveled to Taipei City Hospital for further treatment. He recently returned home with only good things to say about his stay. Here, if they want to draw 10 cc of blood, I get really nervous and even might go into shock. But at Taipei City Hospital, they wanted 20 cc blood, but I felt relaxed throughout. In gratitude, upon his return to Vietnam, Deng invited Ziji volunteers to hold a tea gathering at his hotel as to better introduce Ziji to his employees. Joining them was his older brother, who was a Ziji volunteer and his very proud mother. While Ziji volunteers in Ho Chi Minh City recently celebrated their move to a new, more conveniently located liaison office with a tea gathering. We hope to spread the master's teaching and grow our Ziji family here. The new location is more convenient in terms of location and facilities. We are all very hopeful for the future. The new office is closer to many of our homes. Being more conveniently located, we can come more often. Volunteers also said their goodbyes to three students who will be going to Taiwan for university reminding them to take time to give back to Vietnam and its people upon their graduation. Torrential rain in the Republic of Sierra Leone has led to severe flooding in the capital of Freetown, displacing thousands of residents. Due to the severity of the devastation, city volunteers from the United States have been working with the Healy Foundation and Caritas Foundation to provide assistance to flood victims. Volunteers have also returned to Taiwan to report on the progress of the relief work to Master Zheng Yin. In Republic of Sierra Leone, flooding brought by torrential rain has devastated Freetown since September 16th. Such so volunteers from the United States, who have begun delivering aid to the flood victims, have returned to Taiwan to report on their progress to Master Zheng Yin. This has happened before, but the devastation is especially severe this time. In Freetown and some neighboring villages where we held the distributions, more than a hundred bodies have been found and the death toll is still rising. Master Zheng Yen is concerned, as the flooding and an Ebola outbreak have ravaged Sierra Leone. City volunteers will continue to work with other NGOs to provide rice and daily necessities to the flood victims. Heavy rains led to serious flooding near the capital and the slums. The residents desperately need help. Since the devastation is severe, we will continue to work with the Caritas Foundation and Healy Foundation to provide food and clothes to residents of the most seriously affected areas. Another important issue raised during the meeting is environmental protection. Many city volunteers dedicate themselves to carrying out recycling work every day, in spite of their old age or mobility problems. <laughs> Preserving natural resources is more than the responsibility of recycling volunteers, but something everyone should practice to build a thriving and sustainable environment for future generations. In Singapore, the 2015 Yellow Ribbon Prison Run was recently held to raise awareness among the public on the stigmatization that former inmates face in society. The event organizer invited local city volunteers to promote recycling at the run in an effort to reduce garbage and encourage people to take action to protect planet Earth. Three, two, one! A average of 100 running events are held in Singapore every year to raise awareness among the public on different issues. But what about after the races? A lot of garbage. If they do not see the garbage cans, they won't look for them. They will just throw it away. 
In Singapore, the Yellow Ribbon Prison Run 2015 was held to raise awareness on the stigmatization former inmates face after serving their sentences. The project organizer invited Siji volunteers to promote recycling at the event for the second year in a row. Placing recycling bins along the route, Siji volunteers guided event participants in sorting recyclables. When it comes to garbages, it's not like this one. They, they sort it, which is pretty good. It's good that uh, they are you know, recycling all this because there's a lot of like plastic here, all recyclable materials. So I think, uh, I mean, it's good that they're doing that. So I think it's definitely something that people should do. Uh, it's a small effort, but it's definitely worth the effort. In just three and a half hours, a ton of recyclables were collected. In 2013, about six tons of garbage was collected. Last year, when you came, I collected about two to three tons of garbage. We have worked together to reduce the amount of garbage. While it is important to bear in mind the stigmatization former inmates face, environmental protection is another issue that the public should be aware of. In Pingdong County's northernmost tip lies Gaoshu Township, where one finds the 50-year-old Gaotai Junior High. To prevent students from dropping out, the school has added a wide variety of performance art and sport programs. However, as many of the school's buildings have become run down, the Tiji Foundation has launched a major renovation project for the isolated school. As a baseball is struck and flies away, so do the dreams of these aspiring baseball players soar. I'm 13 years old. My hobby is playing baseball. The hardest part about it is the calisthenics. The Gold High Junior High baseball team is now seven years old. Due to a limited budget, the coach can only teach his players with old equipment. Currently, the team has about 32 players. As we are without our own baseball field, we practice at a neighboring Xinan field or do some basic drills on the school's track field. Because we have students who come from far away, I have rented a place and have 11 of them living with me right now. <laughs> Learning to live together in harmony is also part of their training. Back at their dormitory, the coach demands that every player should have their personal items in order and must share household chores. <laughs> When the coach gives an order, the rowdy bunch immediately falls into formation. Gaotai Junior High in Gaoshu Pingdong is a 50-year-old school. After a thorough evaluation, Tiji has decided to rebuild a couple of buildings for the school. Before, we had several dilapidated buildings and metal shacks. Taking this opportunity, the Tsuji Foundation has bulldozed them for us. We will have a new building for administrative affairs and one for vocational programs. Also, what's unique is that we will also get a new dormitory for the students. The isolated school sits at Pingdong's northernmost tip, with its entrance facing Da Wu Mountain. The children here are just like the undiscovered treasures of the mountain. One third of our students are indigenous people, while another one third are Hakka and Fukien. They are gifted in both sports and art. <laughs> You get to enjoy performing on stage, and it's awesome when people applaud you for your performance. One, two, three, then we take a step. Remember, raise your hand and leg at the same time. What's interesting about the students here is that they're so simple and innocent. You see that in the way they learn. Their biggest reward is the self-esteem they gain from performing on stage from their academic performance and from interacting with friends, of which helps them believe in themselves. The different teams that the school has, they are really like miniature societies that teach our students about interpersonal relationships. I envision Gao Tai Junior High to be a training center for local athletes. The school's diverse art and sport programs allow these students to develop an interest in learning. 
The Tizi Foundation is incorporating the principal's vision into the new school buildings so that these students' dreams may all one day come true. The 91 earthquake of 1999 left Nantou's Yanping Elementary School almost entirely in ruins. The school, with 80 years of history, was one of the schools which the Tizi Foundation reconstructed as part of its post-quake reconstruction project. Zhang Jingwei, who was in fifth grade at the time, was chosen to perform a Chinese monologue with his classmate at the groundbreaking ceremony. Recently, the 27-year-old returned to his alma mater for the first time in 16 years. Although he does not recall much from the ceremony, what he does remember, however, is the group of city volunteers dressed in blue and white uniforms who were the first to reach out with assistance. Their compassion has in turn inspired Jingwei to make a difference in people's lives and work for the betterment of society. One of the tallest boys in his class, Zhang Jingwei, always sat in the last row of the classroom. And during break times, he and his friends always got up to mischief. We used to go into the bamboo forest after class to play hide and seek, or play marbles in open area there by the kitchen. The earthquake left 80% of Yanping High in ruins. This is the only building that escaped unscathed and has now been turned into a music block. was a diligent student and he excelled academically. He was also chosen by the school to perform a Chinese monologue at the school's groundbreaking ceremony. We didn't have a lot of time to prepare at the time, so we would practice here by the staircase during our break times. He was a bright kid and excelled in language studies. He had a great memory too. Jingwei saw how a school on the verge of collapse gradually rose from the ruins and witnessed firsthand how Tiji volunteers were the first to reach out with assistance. This school was on the verge of collapse following the earthquake. I never expected that an organization such as Tiji would help with the reconstruction of our school. As I came to learn of Tiji's ideals, I had the natural tendency of wanting to help people. Jingwei became actively involved in social work during university, dedicating his free time to tutoring children in rural mountainous regions. Though the devastating earthquake of September 21, 1999 left deep scars in Jingwei's heart, knowing the path he wants to pursue in his life, he is living a life of depth and purpose. Ahead of Mid-Autumn Festival, volunteers at the Kuala Lumpur Jingsi Books and Cafe invited a cultural historian to share with the public old nursery rhymes brought over by some of Malaysia's first Chinese immigrants. The seminar was part of a broader effort by volunteers to help reintroduce facets of Chinese culture and history that are slowly being forgotten by the Chinese community in Malaysia. Through the chanting and sharing of these rhymes, volunteers hope participants can rediscover the essence and joy of Mid-Autumn Festival. Here at Kuala Lumpur Singsi Books and Cafe, members of the audience chant old children's songs and think back to the mid-autumn festivals of their youth. This is to help them remember times from their childhood. Today we have had a chance to listen to others as they share their stories and songs with us. And although we might have heard them before, we find that actually there are many different versions. This children's rhyme from Guangdong's Huining also brings up a host of memories. 
In the past, I felt Mid Autumn Festival as a holiday had more spirit and really brought people together. When the speaker mentioned Li Da Sha, I remember parts of my childhood that I had forgotten. A ton of memories came flooding back. Most of the Chinese population in Malaysia immigrated from China's southern provinces. These nursery rhymes accompany these early immigrants as they reflected on their new lives and their thoughts of home. Our ancestors came from China and landed here. They brought with them a nostalgia and a longing for their hometowns. So when celebrating holidays, they used their own language or dialect to create these nursery rhymes. Through these songs of long ago, older generations remember mid-autumn festivals of days past, while younger generations come to reacquaint themselves with their cultural heritage. In Australia, TG Volunteers organized the 2015 Team Leader Training Seminar with the attendance of more than 200 volunteers from New Zealand and Australia. During the seminar, TG Volunteers from Taiwan shared their stories and thereby inspired attendees to continue their work with firmer resolve. The Tsuji Australia chapter recently held their 2015 team leader training seminar, in which volunteers from Taiwan shared their stories in doing Tsuji's work, such as allocation of work, organizing study sessions, and caring for Dharma families. I cried a lot during the past two days. I feel that I have found myself again. More than 200 volunteers from New Zealand and Australia attended the two-day seminar, during which many were inspired to recruit new volunteers. If we have more Tsuji brothers and sisters, we can work together. We need to start with caring for Dharma families and growing closer to each other. Some other seminar attendees also realize they have room for improvement. I realized I'm not diligent enough and have much room for improvement. After listening to the Tsuji brothers and sisters from Taiwan, I found out I still have much to learn. 80-year-old Xie Mingshi is glad he found the correct life path. It combines Buddhist teachings with ways to practice them. From practice, we will learn more Buddhist principles. So I like it very much. After learning from their counterparts from Taiwan, the seminar attendees will be ready to continue carrying out Tsuji's work in their communities with an even firmer resolve. The Tsuji U.S. headquarters is hosting charity concerts across the country, featuring Taiwan's renowned musical group VOX a cappella to fundraise for the Tsuji Foundation. The group recently arrived in Dallas for their second stop of the tour. We leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.